a little bit about Gauss. Okay, so he was so smart that the Duke of Brunswick, oh. <laughs> whatever that means, sent him to college. Whatever that means? Okay, anyway. So, I mean, okay, somebody... Yeah, continue, whatever. continue. He sent him to uh, basically a college slash university at the time. This was in 1972. So do note, if I have quick maths right now, he was 15 years old. 17. 17. Yes, you said, you said 19. <laughs> Oh, 1792. 1792, okay. When he was 15. Mm. 15 years old. Going to Sounds university. good. Okay. He's 15 years old okay. right now. Okay. And uh, so he went there for a few years. And after that, he went to the University of Göttingen. Göttingen. I don't know how to say that. But he went there for another three years. So while he was in university, guess just guess what he did on his free time. Probably invented something. He he rediscovered mm-hmm. rediscovered important theorems on his own. He was just you know what wow. going from the bare bones and just discovering things that were already known. Um, and yeah, he he's a big number theory guy. He likes geometry, shapes, relationships between numbers. For some reason, you know what I mean, mm. like. This number is a square of a power of two that is divisible by only three primes. So it's a triangular diagonal number. Anyways, that's just me making fun of number theory. Mm. So, yeah, that not much, not many interesting things. I mean, obviously, interesting things happened while he was in university. But the, the whole, the gist of it is that he was smart and he made a lot of a lot of breakthroughs that don't really seem like breakthroughs because they're just mathematical things. You know what I mean? Like, for example, for example, um, it said that he, he showed that a regular polygon can be constructed with a compass and a straight edge if the number of its sides is the product of distinct Fermat primes and a power of two. That was a breakthrough that in, wow. seven, in 1796... I don't know. I don't know the 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 weight behind that breakthrough. Like, is that so important? I don't know. It feels rather. Specific. I mean, anything really like based like in that level. Yeah, of logic, yeah, like, exactly. Sounds, like, it, would be really it, it seems really specific and really like oh breakthrough though. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I can I can see that. I feel I like I feel like calculus is a breakthrough. You know that is like a revolution. That's not Revol- a break. That's like a. That's I mean, literally changing. I mean, mathematics. I mean, breakthrough. Breakthrough at a minimum. Yeah, that's, what, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. Like calculus is like is such a high level of a breakthrough that I don't even think they're on really the same level. Yeah, no. Like this is probably like a minor big breakthrough. Like a really. <laughs> really, it, says, really it, minor. Says, it says breakthrough. I don't know what you <laughs> it want. It says to. breakthrough, but it's so, a really minor breakthrough. So okay, let's let's talk about. Like the things that he did, you know what I mean? First of all, this Gauss, guy, there's this so guy, many things. This yeah. guy was in algebra. This guy was in astronomy. Statistics. Statistics. Crazy. So important in statistics. Magnetism. So important in magnetism. Crazy. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit of algebra here. So he wrote a bunch of things. I don't think it's per- useful to just start naming things that he wrote. So I'm not going to do that. But he did... Uh, prove some of the following conjectures which i think is pretty interesting so at the time you had a bunch of statements and people didn't know like if they were true like they guessed they conjectured them but he proved a whole bunch of them so first of all he proved um fermat's polygonal number theorem i'm not gonna go th- understand i'm not going to go through the proof but i will tell you what no, the, yeah, what the theory exactly is that, okay. that, i want to know that <laughs> okay so the the fermat polygonal number theorem says that every positive integer is a sum of at most n n gonal numbers so what does that mean what does that mean so an n gonal number is not really what you think but uh Here's what it is. I'll start with an example. A triangular number is a three-gonal number. It's basically, if you can make a triangle 
with oh, those like numbers. Three, four, like the three, four, five triangles? Yeah, yeah. Like if you yeah, can yeah. make triangles with that n amount of dots, yeah. then it's a triangular, trying and three so what's, gonal number. So what's the number? Like for three, four, five for the sides, like what's the number related to No, 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 not, like, no, that, like, that, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Like you can have three and then you can have three plus three, six, right? Like you just keep adding rows. You have one and then three and then six and okay. then 10 and then 15. Oh, you're you talking know? about. Oh, you're talking you know? about the. Yeah, yeah, you're talking like, about like, the. Like thing. cups, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about. Uh, what do yeah, you call it? When you build a triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Pascal's triangle. Yeah. Yeah, there that's you go. exactly what you're talking about. That's okay. that's a three gonal number, triangular numbers. And then square numbers is if you can build a square, so you know, three, nine, 16. And then okay. pentagonal number, you got to build a pentagon. So then, you know, it's weird. But, anyways, what, what this theorem is saying is that any positive integer just for all positive integer it's at most so it's a sum of at most n n gonal numbers so you can write any integer as you need at most three triangular numbers or at most four square numbers five pentagonal you know mm. that like that's i feel like the proof for this has to be absolutely crazy oh yeah for sure because you <laughs> have to you have to prove this for like i guess no i guess if it, if it can be done with um you know base case and then induction induction yeah that would be kind of yeah cool. induction is usually what i was because anytime you have an n yeah you can just use induction is what i was thinking too but i i guess i'm not really well versed in uh this kind of stuff but still very no, i mean very it's an it's an interesting yeah no, no it's an regardless. interesting theorem that he proved he also proved Fermat's last theorem, which is actually a very famous theorem. There's a, I know there's a great video that Numberphile made about Fermat's last theorem, and Carl Gauss proved it. And so Fermat's last theorem, it states that there are no three positive integers that satisfy the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n for any integer value of n greater than two. We're both familiar. I mean, <laughs> if n is equal to one, you can find a couple. I think we can. You can find mm -hmm. a couple. If n is equal to two, think of uh, Pythagoras, right? Just think of a couple of triangles. If n is equal to three though, I think you might be out of luck. And I think for any other number, you also might be out of luck. But it turns out that um, I'm pretty sure there's a special case where if n is equal to four, then something weird happens. Okay. But was that the point of the was that the point of the principle or no? Like when n equals a certain number, something happens. No, if n is greater than two. Okay. Then it's not possible. Oh, then it's not yeah, possible. Yeah, it's just not, you just can't oh, do it. Oh, that's what you're saying. Like, you can't find three positive integers that, you know, raised to the n plus raised to the n equals just an integer raised yeah. to the n. So these are all, like, very heavily rooted in math, no. clearly. So he was... For sure, for sure. Wow. For sure. Damn. Yeah.